Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. Uh, you're going to see this on March the 17th. I'm recording it on the 16th. World's changing. It's a different place than it was a week or two ago. Uh, so we've got uh, multiple tournament cancellations. The, uh, the uh, Bass Champs Big Bass Tournament on Fork this weekend has been postponed until mid-July. Um, we have uh, supposed to be fishing the Texas Team Trail this weekend on Toledo Bend. It's also been canceled. Uh, the only tournament that I'm aware of that's still going on is uh, right now the Outlaw Outdoors Average Joe's Tournament Saturday on Rayburn. So if you don't know about that tournament, um, if you and your partner combined have won $1,500 or less than $1,500 on Rayburn this year, you guys qualify for that tournament. Um, I'm, I talked to Clint this afternoon. He has every intent on that tournament carrying on. So um, there you go. We've got at least one tournament fished this weekend. Uh, we will all practice our social distancing. We all know who the social distancing world champion is. Uh, any chance to get a Sasquatch photo in here, of course, I'm going to stick it in here. But um, it's a different time. I, uh, so some of you guys know uh, I had a, a pretty crazy experience on an airplane uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, I then developed a, um, a fever. Uh, I hadn't talked about this much, but... Uh, on the following about five, six days later, was tested for the flu, didn't have the flu, uh, felt pretty crappy for a couple of days. I feel better now. Uh, Sarah's got a little bit of a cough. I've still got a little bit of cough. We've basically sort of self-quarantined for the last uh, week, 10 days. Don't know exactly what's going on because there's no test kits available, but it's been a very, very, very strange uh, couple of weeks in the Smith household. It's why you guys have not seen us. And... Um, if we do get to the lake this weekend, which I hope we do, uh, we'll probably maintain a lot of distance from everybody just to uh, keep everybody safe in case what we have experienced is uh, the coronavirus. We don't, we honestly don't know, uh, but um, it's it's been a weird time. So um, I want to talk a little bit about fishing this week. So for those of you who don't know, there was a, a Whackham Fest on Rayburn this past weekend. That was the uh, Outlaw Outdoors. <laughs> Outlaw Outdoors Sweet 16 Championship. A lot, a lot, a lot of weight got caught. Uh, a lot of that weight, a lot of that weight got caught flipping the bushes, but a lot of weight got caught out over the top of the grass too. So uh, I heard some really good reports of trap fishing, of, uh, of square bill fishing, of a rig fishing, uh, and of spinnerbait fishing and chatterbait fishing actually all out over the grass. So a um, couple of big 20 plus 25 27 pound swingers got caught that way uh, and uh, it's just the fishing is going to be just spectacular and truthfully the lack of tournament pressure is going to cause the fishing to be even better because there's just fewer people on the water and fewer people pulling fish and putting them in the live well and and driving around with them all day so fishing should be great but again let's let's all be smart about this and uh, I, I think uh, I'm actually very very surprised that the uh, the FLW has not canceled the tour event, uh, which is slated to start day after tomorrow. Uh, I, I know of at least one angler who's just going to go home, uh, and that's their prerogative. And I honestly, I don't blame them. I would too at this point. And I know some of you guys think that I'm a little panicky over this, but that's just my opinion. I my my fear is this is much worse than, uh, or could be much worse than what a lot of people think it could be. So, uh, better safe than sorry. Let's uh, you know. The deal here is to control the uh, the flow of people into the hospital, and the best way to do that for us, for us all not to get, get sick at one time. So uh, enough about that. Let's talk a little bit about fishing, and specifically I want to talk about uh, uh, fishing uh, in the bushes. And so um, I'm going to show you some guys some stuff on a map here. Um, but, but what I think is interesting is... And by the way, I think this is a great opportunity because you can actually go to the lake or your lake this weekend and fish without particularly practicing for a tournament. You can just go enjoy fishing, but also take the opportunity to, opportunity to learn a little bit more about fishing. And one of the things that I have, actually, let's go to the map right here. So one of the things I have observed over the years of sight fishing, and by the way, I really enjoy sight fishing. I don't do it a lot in tournaments but I really do enjoy just the sport of sight fishing. And, and by the way, so we're at Toledo Bend on the map here. So this is a 1215 area, San Patricio up here. But what I want to talk about is what I have experienced in, um, in uh, looking for fish on the nest, which gives the opportunity to see lots and lots of fish, especially if you get out on the right days to do that. 
And what I've experienced is, and let's just take this pocket right here for example. If you, if you ran that whole pocket and assuming it was shallow enough and clear enough to see those fish on spawning, you would see tons and tons of fish back here in the drain and tons and tons of fish over here. But my experience always has been, if you're going to see a big fish, it's going to be on that point, on that point, on that point, maybe out there on that cypress tree, or way back out here on one of these point bushes. And what I have learned by doing that and then subsequently by fishing is when I come in and then I'm flipping the bushes in those areas, that's going to be the same experience. I can probably catch a lot more fish in the back of the pockets, but if I want to catch a great big fish, it's going to be out here somewhere. Those big fish I caught last year in March flipping on Rayburn, those were all fish that I would catch fish all through here, but I'd catch a big fish there, or I'd catch a big fish there, or I'd catch a big fish there. And that's just how those fish operate. Those better fish, those bigger fish, the bigger females, they're going to pick the area adjacent or most adjacent to deep water, right? Those cypress trees out here on this point off of this little half moon, uh, even maybe off the back side of it where the north wind can't get to them. They're going to pick the best, deepest, gnarliest cover that they get to pick because they're the big fish and that's what they get to do. They get to choose. Now, the progression historically of what I have found, now you can't really see it here, but I'll show you some pictures, is typically, historically, the fish move first to the buck brush. And buck brush is just that. It's just shallow bushes. This is what they look like, generally speaking. There are some other bushes on Rayburn that I call spider trees. I've heard other guys refer to them as monkey trees. I actually thought they were tupelo trees, but when I looked that up, they're not. But they are trees that have, um, let me see if I can find one real quick. But they are the multi-trunk trees, and if you ever see them with the water down, they actually look like they have a beard for roots. It's a, a very strange looking beard, excuse me, set of roots. But generally speaking, those fish are going to move to the buck brush first. They'll move to the cypress trees if there's cypress trees in the area, and they'll spawn the cypress trees. And they really like spawning on and around uh, the root balls of cypress trees. And then they will move from there, they will move out uh, or in, if you will, actually, I guess actually it's out to the willow bushes. So those fish will back out last to the willow bushes. And generally, to me, a willow bush is a post-spawn bush. Now, don't get me wrong, they'll certainly get in them all year long. And by the way, one of the things all year long, one of the things you have to think about is what those fish are in every day. And you saw me last year, I missed one in the tournament on Rayburn because I skipped a cypress tree because the fish hadn't been in the cypress trees. And my partner flipped in there and pulled a great big one at the top of the water. You have got to got to got to flip all of them until you're fully confident that they are on one thing or another during that day they generally my experience is they don't change during the day but they will change over a day so where they might all be in cypress trees today they might all be in buck brush or willow bushes tomorrow and you've heard me talk about this as well uh, every once in a while especially late late post spawn they'll be on dead willow bushes which are almost always the deepest willow bushes because the high waters kill them off so uh, that's my thought process. Now, by the way, a lot of what's going on right now at Rayburn is uh, there is, and, and let's talk about that also. So there's also what's known as an inside grass line. Now, you're not going to see one here, but an inside grass line would be, let's assume hydrilla grows from, say, let's say that's five feet out to nine feet. So you've got an inside grass line at five feet, and then you've got sand between the grass line and the bushes. And those fish will a lot of times move to the in, outside grass line first, then to the inside grass line, and then to the bushes. Usually, again, buck brush first, followed by cypress trees if there's cypress trees in the area, and then back to the willow bushes. Now, you guys saw us really whack on them last year post-spawn on the cypress trees. That's nothing to do with the bass spawn. That has more to do with the brim spawn. Some reason brim seem, especially on Raven and Salida, to really, really like spawning around those cypress trees. So when you can find a cypress tree, especially one like that out there by itself, you'll find brim beds around it, and you can catch those large females and males, but mostly large females up there, munching post-spawn on, on brim that are spawning. It's basically payback time. 
uh, you know, the brim have been up there eating the bass's uh, eggs and, and fry all spring, and it's payback time once those those brim get on the bed that those big fish come in there and they really work them over. I got to tell you, one of the most fun days I've ever experienced on Cedar Creek Lake was against retainer walls and a foot to six feet of water on a Carolina rig on spawning on spawn, uh, excuse me, on uh, areas that brim were spawning in and the largemouth were up there just smoking them and we caught 50, 60 fish a day for a couple of weeks on Cedar Creek. Same thing happened on Rachel Chambers, by the way, uh, where those bass were just up there munching on those fish that were on the spawn. So um, now let's talk a little bit about equipment. So you guys saw last year when that water was really high, I was flipping those bush bushes using a parabolic bend rod. I really move away from that, and the reason I do that is, uh, and I'll, I'll show you a fish I had on last year right here. When those fish get buried in those deep bushes, you don't want that rod to unload. You want that rod to stay loaded on those fish until you can either pull them free or they swim free. And my experience is when the the, when the trees are shallower like what they are right now or we're on their own, when they're on docks where I can actually pull them out of that bad place. When I can actually pull them out of that bad place on the hook set, I want a rod that has a normal load so when I pull them out they're free and I can go ahead and put them in the boat. I don't want that parabolic bin rod on my flipping when I can pull them out of the brush. I usually use that parabolic bin rod when I'm either flipping really deep brush or when I'm fishing, I'm going to call it more organic stuff, right? Whether that be grass or hyacinth or goodness forbid, flipping that, that old nasty um, water hyacinth. When there's stuff that those fish are going to get bound up in, like those guys, and that's where I learned that from Bradley Hallman, fishing down on uh, Okeechobee or one of the Florida Lakes, Toho, when he was flipping those reed heads. And he'd get those fish stuck in there, and that parabolic bend rod kept those kept that rod from unloading and those fish from getting off. He just had to stay leaning on them, so he was either able to get over there to them, or I actually let them swim free and they'd pull free. So, right now with the water level at Rayburn and Toledo, I'm not flipping that parabolic bend rod. I'm flipping a more traditional rod. From the rod up again, here's my setup. So, and I have a very strong belief in this. I use a creature bait. Now I'm using the Six Cents Prawn bait. You guys have seen me flipping that bait recently. Uh, that bait pairs really nicely with a two or a three-aught EWG, uh, extra wide gap, super line hook. We've talked about this before. It's a smaller hook because I don't want a lot of hooks sticking out through the top of that fish's mouth when I'm pulling them out of those bushes because those hooks will get hung up. I double peg my sinker. A guy asked what I meant by that the other day. So my bait's here, my sinker's here. I put a peg between the bait and the sinker so my bait doesn't knock, excuse me, my sinker doesn't knock the bait down. And I put a peg above the bait and push it down flush so that when I flip that in there, it's one piece and it all falls through there together. So uh, EWG hook, peg peg on either side of my sinker, usually at least a half. Most of the time, a 5 8, five eight ounce are my go-to. That gives me penetration power without a huge sinker popping that fish's mouth open. If I'm flipping organic stuff, high synth, really deep bushes where I've really got to get a bait to go through a lot of stuff, I'll go up and fish a three-quarter or a one ounce or even bigger sinker. But I prefer not to do that solely for the reason of my belief of that sinker being a shoehorn popping that fish's mouth open when I set the hook or when I'm pulling on them really hard. So this is one of the occasions I use a still a heavy sinker, but as small a diameter sinker as I can possibly get away with. You'll remember the six cents bit we did earlier this year looking at sinker diameters, and that's one of the reasons I use a six, six, six cents titanium sinkers, the tung, excuse me, tungsten sinkers, because they're some of the smallest diameter sinkers anybody makes. I am a firm believer if I can get away with it in flipping fluorocarbon. Two big reasons. Number one, it, I think I get more bites. But number two, it doesn't bite into green limbs as bad as, uh, as, bad as braid does. Now, Seaguar braid is some of the slickest braid out there. But if you flip over a green limb and you really pull on them, it will saw itself into that limb and make it harder to get that fish out of there. That fluorocarbon is so much slicker, it'll pull over those limbs. And I've talked about this before, I'm knocking on wood again. I still have not broken a fish off on 25-pound cigar flipping. 
I'm sure it'll happen. I broke a fish off on Power Pro 60 pound braid flipping on Tawakani years ago. So you're gonna break fish off, but I have a lot, a lot of confidence as long as I keep good, fresh 25 pound cigar flipping line on there, I'm not gonna have a problem breaking those fish off. We've already talked about the rod. I'm a big fan of the, of the little, it's a shorter handle rod, but the loose, um, it's called a Magnum Jig Rod. I'll show you what that rod looks like right here. Uh, that's a rod I really, really like. And this is an occasion where I prefer a very, very fast speed reel. And I prefer the speed of the reel not to get the fish out faster. Uh, I prefer it because it allows me to make more presentations throughout a day. And I'm talking a 7 or an 8-1 speed uh, reel to speed ratio. So for every time I turn that handle, it spins that spool inside that reel 7 or 8 times. Most of those reels will pick up 35 inches of line for every reel turn. I generally speaking flip my bait in there, lift it. If they're not there, I've rolled it out and put it in another bush. Now, if I'm not getting bit, I will start hopping baits to see if maybe they're looking at them. And that changes my game if that's the case. I get a couple bites. You saw me guys get a bite last week where I hopped it and the fish bit it. But usually if they're in there and they're on the spawn and they're under a bush, they're very comfortable and they're going to bite anything that comes into their territory or they're going to whack it first try. So flip it in there. Lift it once. If there's nothing there, reel it out and make another presentation. And that faster reel just gives me the opportunity to make more and more presentations throughout the day. Just like what we're talking about where you want to go flipping in these pockets. So again, if you went into this pocket sight fishing, you might see a ton of fish in the back of this pocket sight fishing, but you would see bigger fish out here on these points. You're going to experience the exact same thing. Let's blow that up a little bit for you guys. You're going to experience the exact same thing in fishing, uh, flipping bushes. You're going to catch more fish on these point-oriented, closer to the deep water places that are the more favorable positions that those bigger fish get to choose than you will in the backs of all these pockets. So again, point, 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 versus spending a whole bunch of time flipping that whole pocket. It's just like we talked about a few weeks ago when the water was still really cold. If you have an opportunity to fix to fish six sunny sides of pockets versus three pockets where you fish the sunny and the shady time side, you fish the sunny side. Same thing here. Spend your time in the high percentage areas where you see big fish spawn and when you can see them, and you're going to catch more big fish when you're up there flipping. So that's my thoughts on flipping the gear I'm using right now. And what I would do, and by the way, I didn't talk about that. That's San Patricio. That's, uh, what's that little ramp called up there? Well, anyway, it's the one above 1215. So that's the 1215 area. So um, I'm just pointing that out so you guys can have a reference of what I'm talking about on the map. But uh, that's my thoughts. Hope that's helpful. And uh, hopefully we'll get down to the lake this weekend, get some fishing done, get some videos up for you guys. Probably not going to be real social, but, um, uh, you know, Probably not a better activity to do when you need to kind of be out by yourself and go bass fishing. So let's go bass fishing, guys. We'll see you uh, uh, soon on some more videos. Thanks for tuning in.